If you've been following the Sociology Podcast since I launched it in 2021, you will be aware of the Reverse Psychology subseries, which is basically unpopular Chicago opinions from Chicago. You will also be aware of the SAT, the Sociology Awareness Test, where I quiz random Chicagoans about different questions in regards to Chicago history and culture. Well, this Black History Month, I'm introducing the Chicago Goats subseries. This is basically a black Chicago history blitz that details and gives brief summaries of different black Chicagoans that lived in our city and did great things in their respective careers and left a huge impact not only the city but on the entire world. So without further ado, let's get into it. From Harold Washington to Harold's Chicken and everything in between and beyond, this is Sociology. Filmmaking is still a passion of mine. I still consider myself a student of film. I produced a short film in 2012 titled Relationship Status. I tried my hand at the web series genres in 2013 and 2014, respectively. There is no secret that Spike Lee is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. And in 2024, you have an explosion of black filmmakers. There's too many to name. I'm not even going to try. Whether it's the amateur, the indie, or the mainstream genres, they're everywhere. But it was over 100 years ago that a black man born here in Chicago became a pioneer in black filmmaking. This episode is about the Chicago goat, William D. Foster. Born in 1884 here in Chicago, like I said, William D. Foster got his career started as a sports writer for the Chicago Defender under the name Julie Jones. He also will act as an agent for vaudeville acts at the local theaters. In 1910, he started the very first black owned film production company in the entire country the William Foster Photoplay Company. And in 1912, he debuted his first film, the first silent film with an all black cast and a black director titled The Railroad Porter. That debuted in 1912 at the State, the Grand, and the Pekin Theaters on the south side of Chicago. And the Pekin Theater, by the way, was the first black-owned theater in the entire country. He didn't own it, but a man named Robert Motts did. When Foster was asked why he entered the film industry, he said, quote, It is the Negro businessman's only international chance to make money and put his race right with the world, end quote. This was in response to the blackface and the derogatory films and images that was about black Americans during this time period. You had racist filmmakers like D.W. Griffin putting out films like Birth of a Nation. Now, The Railroad Porter debuted in 1912, like I said, and it did bring William Foster a lot of financial success. But unfortunately, his subsequent three films didn't bring the same financial success or critical success. So because of that, he closed down his company in 1913 and he moved to Los Angeles in the early 1920s to try to replicate that success, but to avail. He moved back to Chicago and continued to be a writer for various newspapers and even tried his hand at some books, but unfortunately he passed away here in the city on April 15th, 1940. Now, although William D. Foster didn't accumulate the financial success over the entire stretch of his career that he would have hoped to or that we would like to in our careers, the reality is he made his imprint known and he started the trail for others like Oscar Michaud to follow, for others like George Johnson, who opened the Lincoln Motion Picture Company, for other companies like the Ebony Film Corporation. William D. Foster did it first. William D. Foster had that courage in a time where black people were not encouraged to make films about themselves, to put images about themselves out, positive images. So when you look at time periods like the 90s, which some considered the golden era for black films. You had a lot of rom-coms in that era, right? When you look at the early 2000s, and once again, when you look at our era now with the influx of black filmmakers, we cannot forget those who had the courage and did it first, those who stepped out on faith. So William D. Foster, we salute you. You truly are a Chicago. If you enjoyed this podcast, I ask for two things and I would love you forever. Number one, please engage with us on social media. So like, share, subscribe, and comment on whatever platform you're listening to it on. And number two, please make sure you pass it on to a friend who will enjoy it as well.